in a solubility graph using the data we collected on dissolved oxygen in the class and in the field. And we will be making this in Google Sheets. So in order for us to begin, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are in Google Classroom. Once you're entered in Google Classroom, make sure you click on the Classwork uh, tab and scroll down to Unit 6 Assignments. Once you get to Unit 6 Assignments, you should see one labeled Creating a Solubility Graph of Dissolved Oxygen. Once you see that, you'll click it and this will pop up. Um, what you'll see first is the set of written directions. So if you prefer to just read it and try to make your graph at the same time, you can do that or um, you're probably watching this video um, instead. And so what you'll do is you'll scroll down and you'll see a Google Sheets assignment. You'll go ahead and click that and once you click that something like um, this should pop up. All right. And so once you see this, what you're going to do is you'll see that there is a surface water tab, a bottom water tab, a tap water tab, and a solubility graph tab. Um, all your tabs should have data except for the solubility graph tab. This tab should be completely blank because this is where we are going to enter um, our chart. And so what we want to do is go ahead and click that tab and make sure it's empty. You're going to go to insert and you'll scroll down to where it says uh, chart. You'll click that and what you're going to see is there's going to be an empty chart with that says no data and then you'll see something called a chart editor which we'll use to help tell uh, sheets what we want in the graph um, and what we want populated in there. Um, once we have all this open what we want to do is we want to look over here where it says data and it's going to tell you the chart type. Right now it says we have a column chart and that's not what we want. We want a scatter chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this little arrow right here and we're going to scroll down so we see a scatter chart and there's one right here. So you'll click on the first one. And so right now we still don't have any data just because we haven't told it um, what kind of information we want in this chart. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and click where it says data range. Um, there's a grid right off on the side of it. That's what we'll click. And so it's going to ask us what kind of data do we want in this graph. So what we're going to do is uh, the first data we want to insert is the surface water information. So we're going to go ahead and click on the tab that says surface water. We're going to click on B2, highlight it up to C2, and all the way down until we hit the last set of data. So from B2, C2, all the way down to you hit your last data points. Um, once you highlight it, it should populate in this little box right here, and you'll click OK. And so what it's done is it's plotted those points from that information. Um, we still need information from bottle, bottom water and um, tap water. So what we'll do is, again, where it says data range, we're going to click on that grid again, and that same box is going to pop up. Um, only this time we're going to go ahead and click where it says add another range and this time we're going to go over to bottom water and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go from B2, highlight it to C2, drag it all the way down to the last set of data points and you should see it populate right there. We'll click OK and now you'll see a multitude of colors on here. Um, we're still not done so we still need tap water so what we're going to do is we're going to go to data range again over here where the grid is, we're going to click it once again. We're going to add another range. We're going to go to tap water. And then we're going to do the same thing. Highlight from B2 to C2 all the way down until the last set of data points. All right there. Um, again, you should see it uh, populate in this box right here. Once it has, you'll click OK. And so now we've got all these points, all these colors, and it's just all kind of confusing at the moment. Um, so even though we've told the chart editor what we want in the graph, there's still a few things we need to tell it to make sure uh, we have the right set of data on our graph. Um, so right here where it says series, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to tell it that temperature is not part of the series. And so any there should be two temperatures that pop up right here. You're going to want to remove it. And so to remove it, you're going to click on these three little dots off to the side of temperature and hit remove. And so again, the other temperature, you're going to click the three dots next to it and hit remove. 
So this is our graph so far. So we've got stuff on it now, um, but still not quite there yet. Um, what, what we're going to go ahead and do is we also, before we move on to the next couple of steps, um, right here at the bottom where it says use row two as headers, we're going to go ahead and click that. And so what we're going to do now is once you click that, we'll move on to, uh, to the top here where it says customize and we'll go ahead and click that. Um, the next thing we want to do is we want to label the different parts of our graph. So we're going to go ahead and click where it says chart and axis titles. We'll click the little arrow to the side of it and this will pop up. Um, Yours should pop up with chart title first. If it doesn't, you'll click on this arrow and click on chart title. So we want to title our graph um, and we'll go ahead and title it solubility of dissolved oxygen. And so once you type that in, it should pop up right here at the top of your graph. Let's go ahead and center it since it is the main title of our entire graph. And so you should see it move once you click that. Um, now we still need to title our x-axis and our y-axis. And so over here where it says type, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit the down arrow over here. We're going to go ahead and click horizontal axis first. Horizontal is this bottom one right here, or x-axis. Um, and that represents our temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and write in temperature. Um, it's also important to indicate what units we use that, to measure temperature. Um, in this case, we use Celsius, so I'm going to go ahead and write Celsius. If you don't know how to spell Celsius, there's spell checks, so just make sure you correct it um, if it tells you it's wrong. And so you should see immediately as you type it in, it pops up in your graph. Once you have the x-axis or the horizontal axis complete, we'll go back to type, click the down arrow, and we're going to go ahead and label the vertical axis or the y-axis. And so the y-axis represents our dissolved oxygen. And uh, the unit we used for that was parts per million, so PPM. So make sure you also indicate that as well. And again, as you type it up, it should pop up immediately on the side. Um, when you're done with that, we're going to look back at chart and axis titles. We're going to click the arrow to the side of it just to go ahead and close it since we're done with it. The next thing we want to look at is the section called series. And so we'll click the arrow to open up the options. Um, what we want to do here is we want it to show us the trend line. So this is the best fit line of our data. Um, the trend line is not quite right yet, so what we want to do is over here where it says type, we want it to be an exponential um, trend line. And so it doesn't look like a big difference right now, um, but it's important that we click this for our next step. So once you have all that done, we'll close up series using the arrow next to it. And then finally, our last step is we're done with customize uh, using the customize section. So we're going to go ahead and move over to data again. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of data. And our last step is we'll go ahead and click aggregate column B. Once you do that, you should see that you have three trend lines going downward. Um, once you have a graph that looks similar to this, you are done. Um, and uh, what you'll do is somewhere at the top of your screen, probably right here where my share button is, instead of share, you should see a button that says turn in or done. Um, you will click that button um, and submit your graph once it is complete. Um, in addition to that, make sure when you go to Google Classroom again, there should as well be a button down here somewhere that says turn in or complete or done. And make sure you click that as well to get credit for the assignment.